right, welcome, one and all, to a new season of Fragments of Silicon. I know it's always a bit weird with our show because we consider the Wednesday broadcast the first actual show of the season, but these are the first actual broadcasts, as the reviews don't count towards numbers in terms of when we you know, broadcast a week. It's just how it goes. Anyway, um, we're back. We've got four uh, games up as usual. Um, first of which is the Vasara Collection. Um, so I suppose a bit of backstory here. Uh, Vasara is a series of shmups in that there are two of them. So that technically counts as a series. Um, that were kind of an underground sensation in terms of shmups, and considering this is some, these are games from 2000, 2001, we're already talking about um, the era when shmups went very underground, very cultish. Now, it's like the shmups time in uh, the limelight as a mainstream genre, really like the mid eighties to the early, to the early mid nineties, you know, before 3d came along and changed our perceptions of what a shooter could be, you know, because that is what uh, the shmup contracts to in case you didn't know a spaceship shooter or a shoot 'em up, if you will, like, then the FPS came along. Anyway, um, and Vesara was not put out by you know one of the heavyweights. Like it wasn't say Gigawing or Mars Matrix or Strikers. I'm like, um, it was the final projects of a company called Visco. Uh, again, uh, they had a long history. Not really going to get into it here because that's a topic in and of itself. They did a lot of Neo Geo work, uh, let's just say. And Visara, they were kind of, they were the swan song, I suppose, of this company. I, I think they lasted a bit longer uh, as a producing entity, but these are like these are generally held as you know, if not the highest works that they ever put out uh, among the top. Um, but the Vasara duo here have re remained, even by shmup standards, fairly obscure. Like, you kind of have to, like, even if you're in, you know, your gradius is from your R types, Vasara isn't the name that comes up because, well, just look at the name attached to it, Visco. You know, that's not a name that exactly rolls off the top of your head say like konami or capcom or you know something like that um not helped by the fact that um until this collection happened vasara remained an arcade exclusive you know and once again we are talking about things that came out in 2000 2001 you know and i'm not sure they got a western release uh, if they did, once again, we're talking about the time when arcades were really starting to die in the West. So everything lines up here for a collection that, you know, or a uh, package of games that would languish in obscurity. And, you know, I won't say that Vasara has gained all that much notoriety with this um, package release, because um, this is a thing that's been out for a couple of years now. Uh you know, the Steam edition registering in 2019. Like, and if I'm recalling correctly, it's out on the PlayStation 4, Nintendo Switch. Um, I think it even got a P, uh, PS Vita release in Japan. Like, so it's made the rounds. Not sure if it's on the Xbox One, but my point is, it's a classic game, but it's a deep enough cult classic where a company like Cubite can release it. Um, Cubite, by the way, is a name that has shown up on this show quite a few times. Not just their game releases, but we've interviewed them a few times. In fact, I, um, 
I know we interviewed them about the Vasara collection at, uh, during one of their interviews. I forget if it's the first or the second, but mm, that's immaterial. So the Vasara collection itself is an interesting work here. Not, you know, because Petty was actually asking about this in the pre-show, you know, that this was made in Unity. Uh, t- yes and no. So it's got the original 2000 and 2001 releases, which obviously could not be made in Unity. Right? Um, and yes, it is packaged in a Unity wrapper, but uh, like the Unity game engine was actually used to create something new. And that's timeless mode. Uh, that is this um, score attack fusion of Vasara 1 and 2. Uh, you, like you got all the characters hit in and all of the assets have been redone in... Uh, full politi- uh, political 3D. And it's even got a changed orientation. Whereas um, Vasara 1 and 2 are your classic um, vertically orientated shmups. You know, um, indeed, if you have a Nintendo Switch, that'd probably be the optimal release unless you have a one of those um, Plasma or... Uh, yeah, one of those screens that can do Ate mode. I was going to say, does it support that on the Switch version, do you know? or It should. Like, um, like a lot of shmups support uh, the vertical orientation, especially with things like the flip grip out. Right. I, yeah. I can't personally confirm because I don't have a Nintendo Switch. Like, And, you know, we didn't have a Switch version lying around. So that will remain un, uh, beyond the confines of this review. Like, unless somebody wants to plunk down the cash for it right in the here and now. I don't think that's happening. Like, mm. Anyway. So, yeah. Getting back, uh, Timeless Attack is oriented to, well, modern uh, screens. It's in widescreen. Horizontal widescreen. I'm like... I'll be honest, I'm not sure how much commentary I can offer on such an orientation change. I'm not the biggest uh, shmup fan in the world. Like, I'll be honest, to me, it looks fucking bizarre. Because I don't think I've, you know, I, I haven't seen too many shmups. I can't, you know, I, I can't say I've never seen a shmup adopt this kind of uh, uh, screen orientation. Jamestown comes to mind, but, you know, that was a, uh, a shmup built in 2011. You know, that being said, it, it does make sense for something that was built in, uh, you know, 2018, 2019, whenever that was crafted. Like, um, so it shouldn't be a big problem. Um, I, I guess... My bigger issue is the actual assets here. I'll get to the uh, to the core of the matter. They look not good. Like, but that's kind of what I was expecting. Um, because look, um, this is clearly 3D done on a budget, and uh, you know it's something compared to you know like the water looks overly reflective, but. It's not. It doesn't have the fine detail that the original two games have, because once again we're talking about games that were crafted um, at, you know, like peak sprite animation uh, in the old style. Also has a problem like, where you it, don't go left and right quite fast enough. You know, this is maybe not weird. quite metal slug level, but it's still. Very impressive 2D artwork. Um, now, as far as the original two Vasara games, uh, they are very solid shmups. Um, very solid arcade things. Um, my enjoyment of them was ruined by an arcade design philosophy that I haven't seen often, but when I ha- see it, I instantly hate it. And that is when you get to the last level and all of a sudden it changes the des- uh, the design. That is to say, oh, hey, remember all those infinite continues that you got? That's gone. You actually have to complete the level on a uh, set credit or else you go back to the fucking game. 
I fucking hate this. That is antithetical to arcade game design. That's something from the console. Like, I can name a few games. Like, I hated it in Time Soldier. I hated it in NARC. I hated it here. Goes back it's to like, the, go back to the beginning of what? The level. Okay. It's, so so there are no you can't Yeah. You just have to do the last level on one life. Um one set of lives, if you will. Okay. One, yeah, that's one not great. I, I thought you were talking about like they change like the gameplay style. No, no, no. Uh, but that's the problem. They didn't change the gameplay style. It's still that um hard as nails arcade um gameplay that's designed to suck up your quarters but you know you're you're tasked to actually get good if you will you know you you can't um even though that this is um very brutal difficulty designed to take your quarters you know it's like you can still um put in credits quarters whatever you want to call them um but it's like you will have to do some memoriz- memorization and learning cost patterns and all that stuff, and I just don't have the patience for that when it's an arcade game, an actual arcade game. It's like, I understand, you know, I, I, I don't understand the design philosophy behind this either. Um, but it's here. That's why I didn't actually complete the game. You know, it's still a, sol- it's still a solid shmup, but um, I wouldn't put it on my greatest ever list. Let's say that. Now, if this was something that were ported to say that or released on the Dreamcast um, or the PlayStation 1, I'd understand that. That's just console game design. You don't get the uh, infinite credits, but you know you usually get the continue, I, you know, depending on the game. You know, some of them have limited continues. That's more of an arcade um, hangover. But like I said, th- this is just really unusual for arcade game design. Not unprecedented. I named another uh, a couple other games I've played over the years that had this. And yeah, I, I don't like it. You know, I don't know how subjective that is. Um it's just if you're actually going to complete the game here, you can't just brute force it by inserting an infinite amount of tokens. You will need to learn that last level. And that holds true for Vasara one and Vasara two. Um, and How I suppose actually work in an arcade, just like when you, the coins you put in still get you more replays of the last set of level, last set of level. But yeah, the last level you, you start at the beginning. And you can start at the beginning as many times as you want, but you're still starting at the beginning. There was no fucking option to change that. I looked, and um, it does have, and, and the games do have diff- difficulties um, segment or uh, options. But, but even like easy with the most amount of lives and bombs and what have you, you're still gonna die a lot because this is a late '90s vertical shmup from the arcade. It's uh-huh. still, you know, it's not quite Toho bullet curtain levels of bullet hell, but we are still firmly in the bullet hell se- um, segment of when shmups formulated. Like, so um, now as far as the differences between Vasaro 1 and 2, uh, they are mostly the same outside of characters. But I, the big one is, and the one that made me like Vasara 2 less, is they took out the bomb. Okay, so in Vasara 1, you have your, you have two, let's say, screen clearing attacks. You have your, let's say, more traditional bomb. It, do, it does differ from character to character. Um, like, it will have a unique function on each character. But, it, you know, it still does the screen-clearing bomb thing. Um, though it's not just an aesthetical thing. It's how the projectile comes out and such. Um, and the other one is the titular Vasara attack. Um, what is the Vasara attack? Well, it's like this um, uh, like big screen-clearing claw thing. At least for the character I was using. Like, um that's the attack you have to build up via 
collecting the red and blue um, objects, uh, jewels. I, I'm not exactly sure what they're called, but you know, I'm, uh, Petty Fan is here demonstrating such things. Um, um, and I'll be honest, I wasn't a big fan of the Vasara uh, attack in general. Like, I mean, it was nice, but it took way too long to fill up. Um, that's why I like the bombs. They operated like standard operating shmup bombs. You use them, you have a limited amount. They replenish when you die. Um, and you can get more of them. Uh, the, the Vasara attack felt like a, you know, something for a different kind of game. You know, where you could, you know, pay attention to all the blue objects and maybe get them without dying. Is it, you know... I mean, look at what Petty's fighting here. This is primo bullet hell from the uh, from the time frame. Now, it, you know, it, it looks very toned down compared to you know, a bullet curtain game, but this is still some fucking bullet hell. But also, you probably have a more than one pixel hitbox. Yeah, yeah. You have a very it, big hitbox, it, good lord. Yeah, that, that, well, that's another feature about these are this kind of bullet hell. You're not compensated by having a very small hitbox. No, no. Your ship is the fucking hitbox. You, and you will die a lot. I have Unless seen you, buses I, with yeah, smaller hitboxes. That's why Toho and shit can get away with you having an actual curtain of bullets is because the actual thing you have to maneuver through the gaps is very small. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. <laughs> yes. But like I said, um, both Vasara games are solid shmups, and it really doesn't matter which one is um, better than the other or how good the um, time attack, uh, the timeless mode is, because you get it all in one package, and you only get it in one package. Um, oh, in terms of the music, a uh, nice mix of traditional. Japanese instrumentation and heavy uh, rock. I, I still got the opening theme stuck in my head. Now, it's actually something I'd probably listen to outside the games. Um, though it's worth noting, there is no soundtrack uh, purchase option on Steam, or you know, you, the soundtrack's probably available elsewhere in one form or another. Um, in terms of pricing, this game clocks in at nine ninety nine. Um, That's not bad. No, um, also worth noting that you can usually get this uh, collection on beat sales during, you know, Steam occasions or you know, insert your platform of choice. Like I got it for about one, two dollars. Like, but even at nine ninety nine, I'd say this is a very good package. Um, once again, not my favorite shmup. Not my favorite shmup from the era. I'd much rather play like the Giga Wing games or Mars Matrix, but it's still solid, um, you know, turn of the century shmup goodness. And well worth it on, you know, whatever platform you wish to buy it on. Uh, any other questions, comments, or concerns about uh, Vasara collection here? Um, I will how, say- how, how is it regarding power ups when you die? That's an interesting question, actually. I forgot to mention this. At, um, because when you die, you will uh, see a bunch of power um, dots, let's call them, mm-hmm. float in the air. Like, and that, the amount depends on uh, how you die. That is to say, if you die and you have more lives left, you'll see a reduced amount. But if you die and you uh, continue, you'll get like a, f- uh, a full power-ups range of shots. So, and that uh, can that um, is bo- uh, across both games. Um, okay. Uh, any other questions? Um, I, something I noticed during the timeless mode: it's the screen's too wide. You don't go fast enough to really, you know, play well. Like the dash, they give you help some, but not enough. I'm not sure if that's a Unity thing. Like, or if it is a uh, part of the perspective, I'm not that versed in um, 
game design uh, to really nail that down. Yeah, that's just something I noticed. Like, I had trouble getting to the left and right of the screen. It's like, oh god. Mm hmm. So yeah, it might be perspective thing. It might just be, hey, yeah, no, this is a problem. Mm hmm. All right. Um. Anything else you want to note, Petty? Um. The games seem pretty all right, other than my issues with timeless mode. But the original games seem mm -hmm. fun. Yeah. yeah. Like I said, it, these are good shall uh, shmups. Like I said, I'm. You know, I wouldn't hold them up to their legendary status. That's me. Like that that's more subjective, I think, than other distillations. Anyway, still, um, good shmup good shmup package. Uh, be sure to pick it up on your platform of choice today. Uh, so that'll about do it for Vasara here. Be sure to tune in after the break as Petty Fan will be reviewing Defend Your Crypt.